Hello, welcome to another photo editing video on this channel. And today I'll show you one of my techniques I've been using for at least five years now, but I've never shown before. So up until now, I only showed it in my longer form tutorials. That's why also I call this my best kept Photoshop secret. The technique I show today might not make such a big difference to an image as the last technique I showed where we really went from a normal photo to a photo containing mist and atmosphere. The technique I show you today can be used to guide the viewer. So I use it to work on micro contrasts in the image and by removing micro contrasts in a very natural way, allowing the viewer to yeah, get past, for example, those boulders here in the front of this image. First, some basics. If you want to guide a viewer to the image, you can do this in various ways. Typically, the eye will travel to areas of high contrast or with a lot of detail. Also bright areas or very colorful areas are usually parts of the image that will draw the eye. On the other hand, if you have very contrasty, very detailed areas right in the foreground of your image, it's good to get the viewer into the photo, but he might just stop there. So you should always be careful with the edges of your frame and don't have to contrast the elements there and yeah, rather increase contrast details, micro contrast in the areas more to your main subject or the center of the frame to keep the viewer there. And now I show you how you can work on micro contrast. So you might think, okay, in Lightroom, we have, for example, a dehaze slider, which also affects micro contrast in a way, but it also affects brightness. It changes colors. So it either dehazes or adds haze to an image and it's more an effect that is yeah, not really subtle. Then there is the clarity slider which you can use to add micro contrast and remove it but I never like the way it does it so there are usually some artifacts, some halos created by that and the cleanest way I found is the one I'll now show you and you can also use it more creatively as I show in the second example but first of all let's just look at this image here this foreground, it's a lot of detail and I want to now reduce the micro contrast here a bit and allow the viewer to travel more into this area of the image. So follow this line of light here and also into the background. How to do that? I first duplicate the layer I want to affect and then that's very important. I go to image adjustments, brightness and contrast. Here it's important to click on use legacy and then reduce the contrast by 50. So minus 50. Next step is to invert the image by pressing Ctrl or Command I and then desaturating it. You can do this by Ctrl Shift or Command Shift U. And now that we have this grayscale inverted version, we go to the blend modes here on the side and set it to soft light. Now already the image looks much more flat, also brighter, a lot of detail is revealed. So you could already think, yeah, this is something you might want to use if you want to bring back shadow detail, but this is not what I want to show you. This is not the technique. We now go to filters, other high pass. So typically the high pass filter will add some contrast if you apply it to normal grayscale version of your image. But this we inverted it, adding a high pass filter to this image will soften the image. So let's just see the before and after. And I found that for an image like 50 megapixel, a radius of around something between 80 and 100 usually works very well, but feel free to fine tune it. So if you go too low, you see there will be more details. So the radius here basically telling which kind of details you want to affect. And I'm going for those here with like, let's say 90. And now I press OK. And now let's see the before and after just for the 100% layer. So before and after. First of all, look at the brightness of the image. There's no change. It just gets softer. And now you could say, okay, this takes away details, but it doesn't. So let's just zoom in on the very fine details. And that's the beauty of this technique. So go really here on those details, the before and the after. So the fine details are still there but the micro contrasts are taken out of the picture. In this way, it's also far superior, in my opinion, to things like Orton Glow or Orton Effect that I see some other photographers use because you make your image more dreamy, but you keep all the fine details. Now, typically, I wouldn't apply it 100% to the whole image, so by 
hitting down alt and then clicking here on the mask icon i apply a black mask to this and now with like 30 percent and a white brush i just brush in here in the areas where i want to remove some of the micro contrast and also here to the sides as i said the sides are the areas where you would usually apply this a bit to keep the viewer more on the central areas of your images so the before and the after and the effect is really subtle and for this image i don't need it that much but sometimes you have images also especially with architecture where you have a cobbled street or something where you have a lot of micro contrast in some areas where you don't want it and then you can use this technique now let's switch to another image where i can show you some more ways to use it maybe to add some mood or some atmosphere to your photos but before we go to the next example also a quick announcement so my photo editing mega bundle which contains all my long-term tutorials so each of those is 90 to 120 minutes and showing my complete workflow from start to finish for the editing of photos you see here so the mega bundle contains all of those and i just discounted it once more it's now just 35 euros so if you want to follow along really for start to finish not just like here in photoshop where i show just individual techniques then yeah this mega bundle might be interesting for you but enough about that let's look at the next image so here we have now a waterfall image which already looks a little bit mystic it was a purring rain when i took this and i also already created again the layer which i showed you so the softening layer if you want you can create an action for that so i'll not go through the steps again you've seen those then it can just be a single click of a button and you get this effect and let's again zoom in and see that the details are still there so for example up here in the leaves it just takes out some of the glare some of the micro contrasts as i've said now for this image i don't just want to apply the softening what i want to do is add mood and darkening to the image so what i can do now add a curves layer and now i clip this curves layer to the softening layer and now when i just darken it so pulling down here on this curves layer i get a nice dark and moody image so something like this so you can combine this base here where you did the softening with a curves layer and by holding down alt you basically can clip the two together so this curves layer directly affects our high pass grayscale image and this then affects the whole image so what you can again do put a mask this time a white mask on this layer use a black brush with like 20 percent soft brush and reduce the effect for example here the waterfall where i want to draw the viewer so keep this a bit brighter also maybe here in the background keep it brighter because this is where the atmosphere was because of the rain so i don't want to darken this too much and yeah this way you can be very selective set some highlights in the image and by this yeah create a nice effect what i would also do in addition to that i just put a blank layer on top set it to soft light so a dutch and burn layer and then with a black brush like 10 percent i would darken here the foreground a bit because that's much too bright so you usually combine different techniques when working on an image but as i said this softening layer can already make a dramatic difference to your images what i also want to add when working on micro contrast typically you don't just want to take out micro contrast what you could also do in addition to that add micro contrast to certain areas so let's just flatten the whole image now which can be done by hitting ctrl shift alt e and if you prefer a non-destructive workflow you can also select all the layers right click on it and convert them to a smart object so whatever you like and then go to filter sharpen unsharp mask and here if you use a small radius it's basically to sharpen the details but again the radius controls what kind of details you want to affect and for micro contrast you can go a little higher here you can also remove the threshold if i go to something like 10 or 20 you see this looks ugly but you wouldn't apply it with such a high amount so typically if you use higher radius here 
you reduce the amount. If you use a small radius, you want to sharpen details, you go higher with the amount. But I rather go with something like that here. Press OK. And yeah, this still looks ugly, so Alt click on this mask icon to remove the effect. And now with a white brush and like 20%, I can gradually add some micro contrast to areas more to the center or around the main subject here. So this way you do both. You take out some micro contrast more to the edges of the frame and you bring back some micro contrast where you want the viewer to look. So see the before and the after. So pretty nice effect and yeah I hope you liked this tutorial as usual. This is just another technique which you add to your own toolbox and then you experiment with it. So it's never like the techniques I show you should just apply them one to one, experiment with them, see how they apply to your images and get creative. So make sure to subscribe for more, leave a like and see you in the next video. Bye.